Can you move over, big boy? I have no room. Your legs are so thick. I like winning yeah, costume today. Look at the tallest trees. <laughs> they have the biggest trunks. <laughs> I am a redwood. <laughs> Alec, Alec went today in cosplay. He went as Boracho. <laughs> <laughs> Alec got his teeth done. Had, finally, in the last video I did, I think I had my bottom two wisdom teeth out. I've now had my top two wisdom teeth out today. So, far, yeah, I'm trying not to move my mouth too much or laugh. Fortunately, I'm with Sam, so I shouldn't need to laugh. So, a no, lot of laughing. Talk and then we're sorted. Peak comedy with you guys, okay? We're here to talk about Mortal Kombat. We just saw it then. We just got back. It's like 10 o'clock at night or whatever. Uh, let's get into it after the drop. We've got Thick Boy here. It's good to be right? here. Uh, it's terrible to have you here. After the drop, let's get into it. All right. So, we just went to the Sydney premiere yep. of the new Mortal Kombat film. Yep. Now, when was the last Mortal Kombat film? 19... Oh, there was Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat Annihilation or something. Uh, yeah. There's been a couple. Remember they were that all whole... very 90s, in the 90s. It was the most 90s thing ever made. Then there was that YouTube thing that had those mini little video, uh, mini short films. What was that? It was almost like they were testing the audience to see how many, how much people really that wanted to see. That was actually really good. That was cool. Maybe I think I was like 12 at the time. Maybe yeah. that's why it was good. But I rated that. I still remember that being pretty cool. But look, my expectations yeah. walking in here based on the previous films is I thought, okay, I'm just going to walk in and just get classic MK, like cringe fest you know the worst acting ever which equals the best film ever because it's like it's it was fun back in the day well i i actually had no expectations i didn't watch a trailer i didn't know who was in it and even after watching it i still don't really know who's in it <laughs> there's a, there a bunch of people that are just kind of working their way up exactly actually. so but yeah I, I i didn't really go in expecting much and look i think on the whole on the whole are they here on the th on the whole, I it felt good. I actually liked it. I <laughs> wait, stop. <laughs> you can't laugh because I, I thought you weren't gonna laugh, bro. What happened to that? On the whole, I actually think it was. It good. felt it felt good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that okay. Expectations number one. You walk into the film in the first fifteen minutes really sets it up. It really set it up to make it look like it was really going to start finally taking itself really seriously. And I kind of like that because, look, we're not going to get... This is a no-spoiler review. It just starts in a certain time where it really fit, you know. Um, you know, if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, a fan of course, you know there's going to be some stuff about Lin Kuei or whatever. Mm. So it just starts in an area where it's, like, really cool and it really fits, really sets the tone to be kind of almost really mature. I got the feeling when I sat down the first 15 minutes, I'm like, whoa, maybe they're God of Warring this. Maybe they're, like, really taking this seriously and, like... Like putting in some real emotion into the Mortal Kombat, you know, saga that that we've known before. Maybe this was going to be a, b a bit like that. But as the credits rolled, as the title credit rolled, after that, it kind of just went downhill, personally. Yeah. So the opening sequence was definitely, I think, first it's only like ten minutes, but it was definitely the strongest section of the film. It's Hands without, down. Without spoiling anything, it's, it's like it's in 18th century Japan. It's really like. It's really well done, well shot. The 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 action is by far mm. the most brutal. It was like what I watched Hacksaw Ridge like two or three weeks ago. It was one of the most violent films I've ever seen. Mm. This was that level of blood and gore, and it was actually turned up. It was the kind of gore you would expect to see in a Mortal Kombat in a game. video game. In a Mortal Kombat game, transferred to film. It was spectacular. You mm. sort of you draw you drawn to it, and then yeah, you say the credits roll, and it turns into obviously the the main film that it is set in present day and, and all that yeah um, that's the thing i think the the, the the big problem that mortal kombat has is in the games you know you're jumping into a certain round and it's all very lore driven in terms of like the Lin Kuei backgrounds and it kind of doesn't need to necessarily have to tie in a plot although they of course they like they do it in the arcade in the story mode like fine well, we've all kind of all agreed from playing the Mortal Kombat previously. No one, no one, gives, a no one shit, gives a shit, and no one really respects or or expects much from those stories, right? There's basically not a Mortal Kombat that I haven't played. Yeah, I've played every single Mortal Kombat. I learned today that Mortal Kombat is about those from Outworld. Fighting those from Earth Realm. I knew that already. I didn't know that. You're an idiot. Then. I play so much Mortal Kombat. You're dumb. But I never gave a shit about their motivations. This you is just the thing. go from fight to fight. And yeah. yes, to your point, the pacing of the film it 
it kind of felt like they were they, they were like, okay, we need to write a script because we want to make a Mortal Kombat movie. We have all these characters that everyone loves. How can we get them from the scene that we've written here to the next scene? So they uh, can the, fight. Bearing in mind the scene here is they're fighting, and then the next scene is they're fighting again. What can we do for that five minutes, maybe even three minutes in between? That's, but my point That's is... That's where it falls over. My point with that is it's so much like the story. Uh, the, the story mode in Mortal Kombat It felt like games. the big tower where it's like, choose your destiny. Yes. And it's just going, okay, next fight. <laughs> and next fight. Yeah. And that was it. We, and look, I don't think it's fair to say that that's a bad thing. But look, yes, but look, when it starts out very, uh, just an overall different tone mm. and then goes to this basically arcade film, uh, it was, I wouldn't say jarring, but it, it kind of left me, it took the wind out of my sails as I was watching it. Definitely. I think when you are trying to bring this from game to screen, especially when you have a maturing audience that have loved the IP since the 90s, we do need more. I, I really think that, you know, a back to God of War, for, like, you know. But no, no, not even just God of War. Like, I think Sonic the Hedgehog, the film, mm -hmm. did a really good job of growing up with its audience. Yes, I think that there was I thought that was a really good film. There was good emotional moments. Yeah. It carried itself well. The plot was well kind of, you know, plotted out. Yeah, it but was nostalgic without being that. like really cringy. Yeah, this um, just felt like it just continued to try and give you more and more characters that you love from the games, trying to make them fight and trying to just do as many nods as possible to the games, which is understandable. It was the 90s in HD. Yeah, it was. So if we've spoken about part one in terms of the start, part two was where it really started to fall over because the story felt so fast, so fast paced. It was like, oh my God, you know, this character's here now and he's going to attack us. You're the chosen one. I'm the chosen one. And it just, it was so quick in that regard that yeah. it didn't have any time to settle down. The, the start um, was so settled and correctly paced and it set the tone so well. And then it just jumped into this middle section where I was like, oh, I can see that this is so painful uh, this is so obviously um trying to show what like you can see the plot vehicles so obviously it really comes down to the characters cole is kind of like the protagonist um yep. he kind of gets you know from the standard you know living his normal life thrown into the mortal Kombat universe mm -hmm. um i found him to be really boring personally <laughs> uh, i found kano to be actually so look there's no spoiler here, come on, you can just go on IMDb and see who's in it. There's Kano in it, right? The host of, of the iconic characters you've seen in every other Mortal Kombat movie, you're going to see, see them in this too. Kano actually stole the show and at the same time handed up so much in so many sections. He stole it too much. That he stole it too much. Yeah, you know, he was actually quite a brilliant actor. We met him. Oh, he was there. He did a little he presentation. Was, yeah, yeah, at the start. We met the director. Like you know, of course, the, the we saw the director. We didn't meet him. Well, you know what I mean, right? I like know. they they did a they did a presentation. They're obviously really well meaning. They want to put the best possible thing together. And you know, Kano definitely at the start was super charming. And then as it went on, it was so clear. It's not the actor's fault. I think it was really the the script relied way too much and lent way too much on Kano. Like all the time, it was like. Here's the moment again where he'll make a quick little remark every 10 seconds. Every 10 seconds, right? I was it like, was dude. Unrelenting. <laughs> it was unrelenting. Uh, look, <laughs> was. I liked him as a character. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. A me lot. Too. But it got to a point where you're like, you know when you're at the pub and someone's just making heaps of jokes non-stop and then for the first like 20 minutes it's really good. And Not then, even sometimes. Sometimes it's five minutes. And then you just like, want to tell them to shut up and chill. We're trying to have a conversation. Yeah. As the movie was trying to do its thing and advance the plot, Kano would just come in with his quips and his his fucking two cents, <laughs> and and I, by the end I was tired. I was tired. I, and, I, and I was tired. And I was like, oh god, Kano, please give it a rest. But this comes back to my previous point about like at the beginning it felt like it was really going to start taking itself seriously. But for me, you can see for me personally, I don't know about you, but the writing just felt like it what it didn't trust itself enough it needs to always have a joke in the middle that kano was giving the comic relief it didn't have any time to just give it some emotional oomph you know like it always was retreating back to let's make sure kano says something funny now and that's that that's not the let's not let this scene actually get heavy and that's kind of would have been nice yeah look i i i agree with you and i don't want to get stuck too stuck up on one character like for example, well, Kano. Th that's only because he did 90% no, of, of the work. Of course, what I'm saying is I think all of the characters on the whole, I oh, thank you, <laughs> were, they were, they were the characters you wanted to see in a Mortal Kombat film. Sure. There were certainly some omissions. It 
certainly positions itself with scope for more tool combat. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's um, so bad. It's very good, isn't it? <laughs> there's certainly there's certainly scope for more to, to come. I'm guessing that really much, really much. I'm guessing that really depends. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? I'm guessing that really depends on on box office numbers and, and all, all of that. that. They they felt a bit um, they felt a bit wooden in some portions. Like uh, the classic Mortal Kombat acting, is that what you mean? Or more like they just yeah, well they just they felt like they didn't really have personality. They just had powers. Yeah, as you said when we walked out of the, the um, movie, you said that this felt soulless. What do you yeah, mean? I thought okay, I thought the movie felt a bit soulless. You've got all these characters that you're like I've been playing Mortal Kombat since I was literally in pull ups. Like I've been playing Mortal so about Kombat. thirteen years old. Yeah, exactly, forever. And like, I wouldn't say I'm a diehard fan, but I care about these characters. Like, and we know, I, a, and we've played a lot of. And them. I think I, in my in my heart and in my mind's eye, I have more character behind these, you know, but that, yes. these player icons and these names than what the sort of what the film was able to imbue within them. But that's the same with and Lord of the Rings. Like, so, someone's gonna read, you know, Lord of the Rings and have a personality behind Gandalf, it, so much more than maybe Sir Ian McKellen ever could for them. Are you ultimately saying that you felt like the characters didn't embody what you wanted them to be? You didn't. You, they didn't embody the Scorpion you wanted. They didn't embody the Liu Kang that you wanted. Well, I don't know if we should say Scorpion. Oh, bro, he's it, on the poster. It's on the poster. Yeah, that's true. Scorpion okay. is in the film. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the poster. Look at this. They're Scorpion. Bro, uh, listen. Uh, I don't think we should talk about Sub Zero. Do you reckon Sub Zero? May, uh, they, they may know he's in the film. I'm not sure. All I can say is things will get a bit cool. <laughs> You're an idiot. Uh, general thoughts, though. General thoughts. Like, okay, first and foremost, would you see this again? I personally wouldn't see this again for now. Um, I, I would watch this again when I go over to my mate's house. And it's five. He's five minutes into it, and I don't want to go home. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, I agree. I'd watch it. I'd enjoy it, but I would never. I would never go out of my way to see this again because I don't really think it ultimately achieved very much by the end. It was an action film, and it was fine. But sure. I'm not going back. Okay, fair enough. Look, I think that um, I wouldn't go back for a long time. I think that its main job for me, what I personally wanted, was to see this grow up. Uh, with where I am now as an adult, like so many people that have been nostalgic from the 90s, they're all 30 and 40 now. They, they, you know, we, we've seen this now. We've seen this in video games and, and and movies that have grown up with their audiences and delivered something that's an action movie, but also nostalgic and 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 can deliver an emotional punch. Mm. This kind of fell short in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't know if this is what everyone's going to want. I don't think that you should see this if you love Mortal Kombat, but don't go in thinking that, you know, this is like Batman Begins, like they've re uh, reimagined this in the way we want That's a good point. As a Mortal Kombat fan, did you enjoy it? Um, I enjoyed it in, in my own way, like seeing, you know, Goro and seeing the first start, like seeing this shit going down with certain characters, like that's cool. And some people might be like, it's a Mortal Kombat film. It doesn't need to be emotional, but like, you know what I mean, though, right? You you need you some, gotta have a reason to, the, to be there. You gotta care, you know. It's the same. Uh, people can say the same thing about Batman. Well, Batman completely reimagined the superhero genre in a lot of ways, and we're all better off for it in terms of movies we, movies we see now. But so look, I, I don't think a, a Mortal Kombat movie has to be Batman. Begin, you know, I don't think it has to be no. the Dark Knight to be good. No, but I to, to your point, I think yes, there was certainly room for a, maybe a more considered story, just so that the journey. Of, between each fight felt worthwhile, not a waste of time. What I will say is that the film did a very good job of maybe not necessarily conveying the characters um, that I believe them to be or thought they were, but it did a very good job of conveying the, 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 the game-iness. It felt like a Mortal Kombat game. But there were moments. Think... There were moments where you saw fatalities. Yes. And 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 you know, fatalities that are from the game were in the movie. Yes. Like, um, and law, common law that we've seen in terms of how characters got their abilities or like certain attributes and all that kind of stuff. But I guess what you're saying is that you liked the gaminess about it. Yeah, I think it, it was to its to its benefit and its detriment. Yeah. Um, so look, ultimately, as I said at the start of the video, I thought it was good, but it wasn't perfect. Nothing is. Um, I think as a Mortal Kombat fan, if you go into it expecting to be entertained, you will be entertained. But you'll certainly find thing you'll you'll certainly find issues there. I'm excited to see if the films are successful. 
what they can do in the future. If they will, and maybe do more it'll stuff. maybe it'll find its feet a little bit more. Mm. But I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I feel like it was worthwhile. Going. It was it was perfectly fine. It was perfectly fine. I just didn't. It didn't get to the stage I would have hoped it got in some areas. But anyway, it's, it's no, it's no, it's not the greatest video game movie ever made, but it's certainly not the worst. So it's a good B tier. Uh, go and check it out. <laughs> good B tier. All right, guys. On the whole, on fun. the whole, it was a B tier. Um, on the whole, <laughs> it was pretty good. On the whole. All right, guys. Lay it out. Good to see you.